The horror elements in Tolkien's works are often overlooked or overshadowed by the grand adventures, and so to celebrate this year's Halloween, I'll be discussing my favorite horror aspects in The Lord of the Rings. Just to be clear, this list will be focusing solely on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and none of the topics are in any particular order. I also won't be discussing their lore in today's video, since I've already covered them in other episodes, and I'd rather focus on what makes them frightening. We'll also be having a giveaway towards the end of this video for some glow-in-the-dark Lord of the Rings jewelry that was kindly given to us by Papillon 9, but more on that later. So the first creatures on our list are the Barrowites, the bones of the ancient kings and queens of Cardolan that were possessed by spirits sent by the Witch King. These whites walk through their forlorn tombs in the Barrow Downs, still wearing their gold and jewelry which clanked upon their bones. They would hunt for those that journey through their lands, paralyzing them and dressing them up in white robes and gold jewels as they prepare to sacrifice them in a ritualistic manner. And perhaps it would be best if their victims remained paralyzed and unconscious, for if they had to awaken, the last thing they would hear would be the eerie chant of the Barrowites. Cold be hand and heart and bone, and cold be sleep under stone, never more to wake on stony bed. Never, till the sun fails and the moon is dead. In the black wind the star shall die, and still on gold here let them lie, till the dark lord lifts up his hand, over dark sea and withered land. The thought of getting captured and paralyzed by these creatures for this evil ritual is unsettling to say the least, especially since you'd be unable to fight back, doomed to simply wait for your death as your body joins those of the ancient dead kings and queens. I also feel that the way the Barrowites chose to prepare and sacrifice their victims in such a ritualistic manner makes them all the more eerie and mysterious, and the true force of terror in Middle-earth. Now the next thing I'd like to discuss is the home of the Witch King known as Minas Morgul, the Tower of Sorcery. This fortress was the ultimate decrepit corruption, a place of death, sickness and madness, where everything was twisted and unwholesome. The very nature of this fortress makes us feel that something is very wrong, and it seems to mock the nature and purpose of things. Its flowers were misshapen, pale and sickly, giving off a foul odor, while statues of twisted humans and beasts stood at the entrance of its bridge. A pale cold mist lay over its lands, and the fortress gave off a sickly light, with its tower windows seeming like countless black holes that led into emptiness. The course of its topmost tower revolved slowly, with a huge ghostly head that lured into the night. Yet rather than its external appearance, which is indeed horrifying to picture, what unnerves me the most is what was possibly inside it. For according to Gandalf, if a man had to enter Minas Morgul, he would be driven mad by the horrors that he would witness, and so I dread to imagine what lay inside it. Now, in my opinion, one of the most eerie and mysterious creatures present in The Lord of the Rings are the Nameless Things, that are found far below the deepest depths of Moria. At first it might seem odd to find these things frightening, since we know so little about them, yet it is this very mystery and vagueness which makes them so terrifying to think about. What was their purpose? Were they evil, good, or simply creatures that wanted to be left alone? Why did they dig these forgotten tunnels, were there more of them scattered across Arda? And since they were older than Sauron, so old that even Sauron wasn't aware of their existence, then where did they come from? Were they part of the music of Arda, a byproduct perhaps? Or did they originate from something much more mysterious, the enigmatic void, similar to Ungoliant? What did they look like? Were they humanoid in shape, worm-like, or something altogether alien? And finally, what sort of creatures must they be, that even Gandalf was reluctant to speak about them, for simply mentioning them would darken the light of day? All these mysteries and questions that have no answer give us so much to think about, and fill our imaginations with dark conclusions and speculation as we ponder upon these nameless things, which is why I feel these creatures are amongst the most eerie and horrific in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Rather than a creature or location, the next subject I chose is actually an event, that of Balin's failed expedition to reclaim Moria, which I find to be one of the most terrifying experiences to imagine. The thought of the dwarves seeing their king Balin die, as they witnessed a huge army of orcs approaching the eastern gate of Moria. Their attempts to close the doors and hold the orcs back, even though they knew they wouldn't succeed, or watching their friends die, as they tried to buy them some time to retreat back into the chamber of Mazarbul. 
I can only imagine the feelings of desperation and urgency that they must have felt, which was made worse after some of them tried to escape through the western gate of Moria, only to find that the waters had risen and that the Watcher had now closed off the spot. It must have been horrible for the dwarfs in that moment to realize that their new home would soon become their tomb. And worst of all, they had to simply wait for their death, helplessly. The thought of being trapped in the chamber of Motherbull as the orcs approached it from either side, hearing the orc drums echo throughout their kingdom as they got louder and more foreboding the closer they got to the dwarfs, and wondering which entrance of the chamber of Motherbull would be breached first, and at which of its doors would you find your death. I think this claustrophobia, desperation and utter terror is captured extremely well in the final words of the dwarfs. We cannot get out. We cannot get out. They are coming. The final creatures I'd like to discuss in today's video are the Silent Watchers. These statues were present outside of the entrance of Kiritungol and they were possessed by a malevolent spirit. They appeared to be seated upon a throne with three bodies that were fused together and they had vulture-like faces and claw-like hands. Each of its three heads faced a different direction, one outwards, one inwards and one looking across the gateway. The spirit that possessed these statues was filled with malice, and its glare was so evil and intense that it made Sam cower in fear. These statues prevented foes from escaping or entering Kiritungol, unless they had an exceptionally strong will, for they filled their enemies with weariness to both mind and body, and left them feeling exhausted and hopeless. If someone managed to breach their invisible barrier, a loud shrill cry would escape the vulture's head and echo throughout the walls of Kiritungol, warning its inhabitants that an intruder was present. Anyway friends, before ending this video, I'd like to quickly tell you about our partnership and giveaway with Papillon 9. They make really awesome glow-in-the-dark jewelry, including some Lord of the Rings themed ones such as the One Ring. And so, if you want to unleash your inner Dark Lord and acquire your own glowing ring of power, simply follow the link to their shop in the video description. For those of you who choose to purchase one of their rings, I'd like to ask you to keep your world domination plans to a minimum. It's no longer a cool thing to do. Papillon 9 have also been kind enough to provide us with a giveaway, consisting of any item from their store valued at $60 or less. If you'd like to enter this competition, simply like this video and leave a comment below and I'll pick a random winner in the next 24 hours. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this Halloween special, it was really fun to make. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what you consider to be the most frightening aspects in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, so feel free to share them with us in the comments below. If you're interested, check out our Facebook, Twitter, Patreon and Discord links in the video description. And if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.